Now, James Murphy is the brilliant brain behind New York's DFA Records and the acclaimed band LCD Sound System, who released their third album, This Is Happening, earlier this year. But now electro maestro Murphy says LCD Sound System's current tour may be their last. We caught up with him at his favourite venue in the world, Glasgow's legendary Barrowlands, to find out why. Here's Miranda Sawyer with the story. James Murphy is widely regarded to be the alpha don of dance floor rock and roll. As a renowned producer and head of cutting edge label DFA Records, he's worked with the likes of Gorillaz, The Rapture and MIA and has become known for taking left field music by the scruff of the neck and shaking the nerdiness out of it. However, it's with his band LCD Sound System that he's garnered the most acclaim, a funny, freaky, fearsome take on New York punk disco. His first single as LCD was Losing My Edge, a knowing ode to ageing hipsters, which soon got art school Brooklynites and music critics everywhere swooning with admiration. LCD Sound System started from a DJ perspective. I was into like punk rock and rock and roll and 60s music and 70s music and I was starting to DJ and the, the options were pretty limited. It was like you could play techno records, which I liked, but some of it, especially like late 90s, was really faceless garbage. There were records that I felt didn't exist. I wanted things to sound differently, so I started making music basically to fill that void. The band kind of just grew out of that. It didn't feel like revolutionary, it just seemed necessary. Though on the road, Murphy enlists some of his closest friends to help bring the music to life, he is a self-confessed control freak who writes, plays and records nearly all of the band's music on his own. I think a lot of bands like are phony democracies. I was always in bands where I was like trying to be egalitarian, but I'd be the drummer and I'd be like, well, we can't do that. And I'd get really frustrated. And then there'd, then we'd be playing out petty resentments with each other rather than working on making the songs better. We'd be like saying, well, you sang the last one. Now I got to sing one. And like all this kind of crap that has nothing to do with music. It has everything to do with group therapy. So I started making music just by myself. Like just, this would be easy. I wanted to bum people out. Despite his reputation for making cutting edge music, Murphy also has strict rules about what instruments can be used on stage, insisting on only using analog equipment, including an array of homemade synthesizers and other even more lo-fi gear. Oh, and here, this is the LCD guitar that you had as a kid, right? Yeah, it's my guitar from when I was 15. And, and it's the, one of the best sounding guitars ever played and it's been lit on fire. A $70 guitar from 1985. It's still our primary guitar. Sounds great. And I scraped off the squire bit so that people would think it was a proper fender. But it's not. It's the cheap, cheap one. No computers, because I don't want to watch anybody check their email. All of this could be done with a laptop. <laughs> But mere technical hitches could never dampen the energy of the crowd at one of Murphy's all-time favourite venues. We are at the Barrowlands in Glasgow. Arguably my favourite venue and my favourite city to play. It feels like a friendship, so it's a good crowd, and they really and when they go for it, they go for it. It's worked out for us as the type of band we are, like the type of energy that they give out. I think we just play better here. I was a drummer in punk bands for years, and energy's always been super important to me. Energy and power, and watching bands not get that right was always really frustrating. It was just important for us to be able to experience the music very physically, you know, be as immersed in it as possible. gets us through the weird times we don't have to say things like, all right, you having fun tonight? Which I always find rude. It's like giving someone food and being like, do you like it? It's like, let me just eat it and I'll get back to you on how I feel about it. 
So why, after three genre-redefining albums and the adoration of sellout crowds, has Murphy decided to put an end to life on the road? The first album came out was 35. I had already lived an adult life with nobody caring about me. Though this is wonderful, I don't really have much fear of it going away. Loving it's not a good enough reason to keep going because I love a lot of things just as much. I love my label just as much as I love the band. I love producing just as much as I love it. So I had to face the fact that the only thing that would have really kept me going versus having the freedom to do other things would have been kind of base needs. So it seemed to be the right decision to be like, well, let's stop being a professional band. For the last two years, I've, been, I've known exactly where I would be in 12 months. And that's better than the mystery and terror of not knowing anything about your life, but at the moment I'm, I'm a little, the grass is greener on the mystery side, I guess. <laughs>